Next up, Julian Danes. He's the CEO of Logger, and Logger has graced our stage uh, at least once before, yeah. many years ago. So it's great to see uh, Julian back in town. He's in Colorado now and doing some good stuff. So we're going to be ready, Julian. Good evening, everyone. My name is Julian. I come from Switzerland, so this, this feels like home for me, uh, even though I moved to the US four years ago. Uh, I like to start usually the demonstration by asking the crowd a question. Who in the room doesn't have a thumb and a smartphone? <laughs> I'm really sorry for your hand. Uh, what if I tell you that this is what you need to get rid of passport in your company? Or if you're a bank, to get rid of passport for your customers? And you can't afford to get rid of passport, right? Just last year, it was $50 billion in data breaches just in the US. Resetting passport costs $400 per user per year. So at Logger, we decided to actually really replace the password. And we are not a password manager. We are not just like this kind of things of the past. If you know what that is, if you're Swiss, you definitely think about that. Um, so we decided to replace them with cryptography biometry, geolocation, and seven other factors. And the demonstration is the following. So the only thing that you need is in order to connect for, to your account is your email address. There's nothing uh, really useful about that. We have this great guy working for us called Tony Stark, he's an intern. And there is nothing installed on this computer, nothing, nothing installed on the browser. I can do the exact same thing on any computer. So when I click next here on my phone, I receive a push notification. I am prompted to choose which account I want to log in with. So if I click Tony, I am prompted for my fingerprint. And just by putting my fingerprint on my phone, without doing anything else, the page refreshes on my computer. And from now on, I can actually log in to all my applications. So if I want to go to Google Apps, just one click away, and I'm connected to my Google Apps account. Just the same for Office 65 or any kind of SaaS application that you are using into your company. So how are we better than from the competition or from these kind of things? Well, our team used to develop these kind of things, but the algorithm, the cryptographic algorithm behind that is quite old now. And there are new things, new algorithm, new cryptographic things that are better. The other, the other reason why we are better from the competition about that is because we are actually gathering and collecting a lot, a ton of data. And these data, we are doing machine learning on top of it in order to make sure that every transaction, every authentication is actually legit. So this data is also available to the administrators. So we built a web dashboard for the administrators so they can actually see everything that's happening into their own organization. So who is connecting to what, when, from what location, with what device, at what time, and so on. And we provide all this data right through the web dashboard. To the web dash, from the, this dashboard, people can also actually manage uh, kind of the directory and list of users, and therefore also provision directly all the SaaS application. So for example, when you onboard a new employee, you don't want to manually create all the accounts of this new employee. So we have provisioning all the accounts in just one click. This is also true when you fire someone and someone quits, you don't want your company's data to be at risk. So in just one click, we actually deactivate all the accounts. And finally, you can also deactivate the devices. Again, there is nothing to install for the company, neither on-prem or neither on the computer of the um, employees. So you, there is also uh, application management. And finally, if you don't want to do that through a web dashboard, we also provide an API for our customers. So how does that apply to the fintech world? Well, we started as a SaaS management platform, but soon we saw that Financial institutions, we are still using these kind of things, or even RSA, RSA security, or just password if you are in the US. So we provide our technology as a service. So financial institutions can provide that technology directly to their customers. How do we know it's secure? And we have been pen tested by multiple banks, and after never being able to break us, they decided to become our customers. So today we have uh, multiple financial institutions in the US mainly using us, and um, the team is based in Colorado. Um, we are actually closing a fundraising right now, so this is our first seed round. Um, and uh, we have about 90% committed today, 
So it was interesting to get in with a little bit of room. And um, you'll be easy to find me tonight if you have questions or some. I'm the guy with the weird accent speaking pretty loud. <laughs> Playing in a market where there's companies like Okta and right. Secure Off, um, your novelty is in the uh, thumbprint. Um, a lot of the banks have been using for their consumer applications have been using the Apple Pay or right. the Apple Model. Right? Um, now, in all of those cases, they tend to have if you fail a few times, there's a fallback on a on a, either an ID or a passphrase. Uh, do you have fallback situations for that as well? Yes, we are, and that, that's the fallback, right? So we have even more than that before the fallback happens. So for example, if you connect this morning from San Francisco and there is a connection attempt this afternoon from Europe, it doesn't make sense, so we would deny from the first connection attempt. So on top of that, because we are collecting data from your habits, from your usage, we can learn from the machine learning algorithm is learning from your habits, and therefore, we know that it doesn't make sense that you're suddenly using an iPhone, right? Uh, more than that, we can actually ask you a question. When was the last time you used your iPhone 6S Y from San Francisco on this very block area? And you know that you don't have a 6S, you have the list of 7. So that, this kind of question, we can leverage them because we are collecting data. None of the condition is actually collecting data, but from the machine, from the computer. We're leveraging data that is always with you, anywhere, everywhere. And none of the condition is actually doing this kind of thing. So it's true that we are competing in a market where identity providers are pretty well known, pretty well funded as well. It's just that we think that we have the technology that goes way deeper than what they've been doing for the past decade and more. Thank you. Hands up, Pai. Left, right, center. I know password are not really sexy to talk about. Anybody? Sasha? Hey, thanks for the demo. So my question is, you, you, the, one of the fundamental points of your description of your company is about metrics and analytics, right? Mm -hmm. How is your analytics driven around biometrics? Because at the end of the day, it's not very widely utilized except for on a financial device perspective, right? To gain access to your device. From a fintech perspective, and from an enterprise fintech perspective, it's not widely used, not widely accepted at the end of the day. Correct. So how do you actually go out there and discuss the value of that, but also have, from a go-to-market perspective, say, hey, you know, we're going to go to these fintech companies, we're going to partner with them, we're going to be able to drive, drive analytics that allow them to get value out of your extra solution. Correct. You're right. Uh, as of today, it's not the biometric aspect is being used just to connect on that very specific device, right? There is no interaction between two devices and that acting as the authority. So, and this, this was our starting point. We, th we thought that this could be the starting point for everything. So, um, we have two approaches, uh, especially for FinTech. We have uh, partners like Samsung SDS, for example, who is actually providing bigger solutions for the enterprise. And we are starting to see FinTech asking for biometric uh, solutions. So, they are going to a Samsung SDS, and they, we are their preferred partner for biometric authentication. Biometric is just one layer. I just want to make sure that everyone understands that. Biometric is just one layer. The core layer is really about cryptography. So this is the way we are seeing that. Now, FinTech is definitely the big market for us to acquire, but starting with uh, fast scaling and self service, we are actually looking to target medium businesses. Think between 100 and 2,000 people that are in need of identity and access management for their own employees. And that's a self-service. So we provide that as a self-service for these kind of companies. And then we make a really, uh, not, te not customized, but tailored, uh, tailored solution for the FinTech. Got it. And so another question, because I like your accent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, this would be relevant to your business. Sorry. Um, it would be to your business, but as you know, like cer certain payment platforms out there that are bringing out uh, facial recognition yes. as a recognition to gain um, access, right, but also for payment purposes and yep. other financial pur uh, purposes. Do you think this will affect your business, or, or is it going to be something that's not relevant to it, even in 
what did you do seeing that? Yeah, so for us today, the fingerprint biometry, even the birds are mocking my accent. Uh, uh, biometry is just one layer, the, the core layer is cryptographic, so we are adding more and more layers over time. Geolocation is just one other. One other. So we actually tried voice and facial recognition, and no one was really interested for privacy reason about those layers. What is interesting though is that people are very interested in iris recognition and we are very, working very closely with the different manufacturers of the phone to be the first one to implement iris recognition. We were ready last year when Samsung announced their Note 7, then there was some kind of fire. <laughs> so we couldn't really, really release that, that, that feature, but more and more players, biometric players are going to go to market and we'll be ready for them. Thanks.